perhaps the president has grown tired of waiting for the Kraken. Mayor Giuliani and Jenna Ellis released a statement last night clarifying that Sidney Powell is not a member of the Trump legal team. This after days of Powell touting a flood of evidence proving Dominion voting machines deleted and flipped votes to favor Vice President Biden over President Trump using commie made election stealing software. Powell says she will continue to pursue those claims on her own on behalf of the American people. But does last night's statement mean the Trump team is all like Sidney who? The panel has returned Ned Bryan, Jessica Tarloff, and Kristen Tate. Uh, so, Ned, I will start with you. How did Sidney Powell become the fall gal? Well, at a certain point, I think it was kind of, well, it was obvious. Uh, if there was actually any real validity to this, my, my biggest tell was the RNC and the Trump campaign would already be in court suing Dominion uh, if these claims had real proof behind them, if there was any veracity to them. As far as I know, they have not sued Dominion and they're not in the courts. I mean, the shame of this all, Kennedy, you were addressing this issue with, with Tim just now about mail-in. How do you fix it? We do what France did in 1975. You outlaw mail-in ballots. You go to paper ballots and photo ID because a lot of Western European nations actually do that because, like France, they discovered it is rife with fraud and manipulation mm -hmm. uh, and it perverts the integrity of the vote. I will say this, the Trump campaign, the electors start voting two weeks from tomorrow. They have a two-week deadline. If they cannot actually get some of this to stick, and there are real questions, we had three to four times the number of mail-in ballots this year over 2016, and yet the rejection rates dropped to nearly a, just about a tenth of what they were in 2016. Mm. There's some real serious questions also about the pre-canvassing taking place in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, where it's illegal to do that and try and cure ballots before Election Day. But they've only got two weeks, and if they can't figure it out, I think you're probably going to see something around December 7th and 8th, right when the electors start voting, where Trump might actually say, you know what, we fought the good fight, it's time to move on. Uh, we need to come up with some objective election standards. And I'm not talking That's about right. a national program, but, but I do think that you know, there are people, Republicans, Democrats, and the multitude of parties underneath who are uh, more than willing to work together to come up with a system that means you don't have even questions of fraud uh, but, you know, I, I did enjoy, Jessica, some of the claims that Sidney Powell was making, not because I thought they might be true, but because uh, it, it took a lot. It, it takes a lot of work to correlate uh, Venezuela with George Soros and the Clinton <laughs> Foundation. Uh, but she she did she did a pretty good job. But how did all of that fall apart? Uh, well, it fell apart because there was nothing to begin with. It was literally a collection of every bonkers rumor there is on the internet or in right-wing media smushed together. You know, the typical boogeyman of all of this, like you said, the Clinton Foundation, George Soros, Hugo Chavez, who passed away seven years ago, and just jam it together and light up the QAnon crowd and just move on. Um, I'm surprised that all of them haven't had to take the fall, though, at this point. I don't think that Sidney Powell was actually that much crazier than we've heard from Rudy Giuliani as he sweats his hair dye down his face. Um, at those press conferences or standing in front of the Four Seasons total landscaping mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago. I mean, the, there have been moments for all the, oh, I'm sorry, also Jenna Ellis uh, demeaning Frank Luntz on Twitter by referring to him as a micro genitalia. I mean, well, none of these people are professionals. Well, he did. I said genitalia, not the <laughs> other word. And, you know, they... <laughs> I have the other word uh, edited out of doing... my monologue tonight. Oh, well, I'm glad that I didn't bring it to the fore then. No, um, um, or the foreskin. I, listen, I wanna, all I, of them. I, we're running out of time, and I want to bring Kennedy. I want to bring Kristen in. Uh, even Rush Limbaugh has taken aim at this legal team. Kristen, when you lose Rush, uh, I, I feel that there was a big shift afoot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Trump's legal path to victory is definitely narrowing. I understand this is kind of upsetting for conservatives, but Republicans and liberty lovers shouldn't be too glum. Republicans did overperform down ballot. Uh, Republicans running on the Trump platform did remarkably well and made inroads with almost every, every demographic, Hispanic Americans, black Americans. So this really isn't, you know, a loss for conservatives. I'm with Young Americans for Liberty. We helped well over 100 
100 liberty-friendly candidates get elected down ballot. That's where the change happens. So if Trump isn't inaugurated in January, it won't be because of the Trump agenda, which is remarkably popular. It'll be because voters, particularly suburban white voters, yeah. grew weary of his tweet storms and, you know, his rhetoric. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, we love liberty, and we're always <laughs> serving up hot freedom. Stick around, panel.